Hello. In this lecture, I will explain you one of the interesting new features in the Yakindu State Charts Professional Edition version 3.0, namely the ability to test state charts using unit tests. Let me first introduce an example of a state chart that I have created and that I will use for the purpose of this lecture. The example is actually a quite simple elevator simulation. So as you can see on the screen, we have an elevator that can move up or move down when it receives floor requests. To start in the initial state, the elevator will be idle. And whenever some floor request is received, it will either start moving upwards if the requested floor is bigger than the current floor. Initially, the current floor and the destination floor will be equal to zero. And if we request a floor that is higher than the current floor, we will set the destination to this higher floor and the elevator will start moving up one by one until the current floor is equal to destination. So we continue to loop here as long as the destination has not been reached. And once the destination has been reached, we go out of the super state moving of moving up by following this transition because we have reached the destination floor which is equal to the current floor. If we want to move down, it's exactly the same procedure. We receive a floor request. We verify if the destination floor that's requested. So the value of the floor, which is actually an incoming event that is parameterized with some integer value. Whenever this value is smaller than the current floor, then we start moving down. Let me now show you a simulation of this stature elevator so that you can see it running in action. As we see, we start in the initial state. All values of the variables are set to zero. What I will now do is I will raise a floor request and I will set the parameter of the incoming floor event to five so that the elevator will start moving to the fifth floor. Since the fifth floor will be bigger than the current floor, which is actually zero, we will be starting to move up. We will loop here five times until the current floor will be equal to five. You will see this here because the value of current floor will start to increase one by one until it reaches five. And then we leave the moving state to go back to the idle state because we have reached the destination floor. So we will be back in the idle state. At that moment, the current floor will be equal to five. And another thing we will see is that after five seconds, we will continue moving down until we have reached the destination floor. So I run by launching the floor request. We start moving down five times. We are back in the idle state. The values are five. Now we wait for five seconds. We start moving down and we are back to the idle state and the current and destination floor are indeed equal to zero. What I can also do is to show you how the elevator can be moving down by receiving an event. To do this, I will set the value of the current floor to 10. And now I will raise a floor request to move the current floor from the 10th floor to the 5th floor. And in that case, if I launch the request, the elevator will start moving down until it reaches the 5th floor. And now if I wait 5 seconds and do nothing, it will continue moving down until it reaches the ground floor. So now actually I want to test if this example has been designed well. To verify this, I have written down here, just below the state chart, some requirements that need to be satisfied by this state chart. For example, after the initialization phase, this state chart should be in the idle state and the elevator should be on the ground floor and no destination floor has yet been selected. A second quite obvious requirement is that whenever we request to go to a particular floor, then the elevator should start moving to this floor. A third requirement is that whenever we request a particular floor, but the floor that we request is actually the same as the current floor, in that case the elevator should not move, it should simply remain in the idle state. A fourth requirement, which is actually a consequence of the second requirement, is Whenever we have selected a particular floor and we start moving, then if the floor that is requested is higher than the current floor, then we should start moving upwards. If the request floor is lower than the current floor, then we should be moving downwards. Fifth requirement, whenever we move to a requested floor, eventually we should reach destination floor and the state chart should go back to its idle state. The sixth requirement, 
specifies that if the elevator is already on a particular floor that is not the ground floor and nothing happens during five seconds, which means no floor request has been received, the elevator should automatically return to the ground floor. The seventh requirement is that the elevator cannot move to a floor below ground level. So these are basically the requirements that we would like to test for this state chart. So what I will do next is to show you how we can actually verify automatically if the requirements that we have imposed for the state chart can be executed by using automated unit tests. Unit testing is something that is very well known at the level of programming languages. The Yakindu 3.0 professional version has implemented support for unit testing directly at the level of state charts. To do so, one has to first create tests. So I will create first a test folder, which is supposed to contain all my unit tests. Inside the test folder, I will create a unit test class specifically for the state chart unit tests. Uh, I have to give it a name. Let's call it elevator.unit, city unit. I have to link it to the state chart I want to test. In this case, there is only one state chart I want to test, which is the elevator state chart. So I will link the tests to this state chart. And once I have done this, I can see that a template for all the tests has been provided. And this is where I have to write the tests. So the first test I will show you as an example is for the first requirement that my state chart should fulfill. So this requirement was simply to show what happens after initialization of the state chart. So let me go back to the state chart to show what we are supposed to test. First of all, whenever we are in the initial state, the initial state should be idle. And whenever we have initialized our state chart, the current floor and the destination floor should be equal to zero. So I can very easily specify these tests by assertions in the same spirit as any unit testing framework. So I'm going to assert that the active state after initialization should be the idle state. The second assertion I will write is that the current floor should be the ground floor. And the third assertion will be that the destination floor should be also the ground floor because basically no destination floor has been selected yet. So this is my first test. I can now run the test to see if the test succeeds. So to do so, I will do as in any traditional unit testing framework. I will actually run the tests. The simulator has been run and we see that one test has been run, which is the first test and it has succeeded. Okay, maybe I should give a better name to the test, call it initialization. And now I run the test again. The name has been changed, but it still uh, succeeds. To show you what could go wrong is, uh, let me just change something in the test. Uh, the test can fail if the expected behavior is not reached. So I will, for example, test that after initialization, the current floor is equal to the first floor. If I would uh, change this and then run the test again, then now I see that the test fails. So this is a very simple test. So let me not write a more sophisticated test for the second requirement. Whenever a new destination floor is requested, the elevator should start moving. Actually, I can copy the template of the first test. I will write a second test. You can see that the tests are annotated using the add test symbol. So let's call the test start moving when floor requested. So I actually want to test if I have raised a floor event, then the elevator should start moving. So to do this, first of all, I have to specify in the state chart that a floor event will be raised with a particular value. So I will raise an event explicitly to make sure that the elevator will actually be moving up five levels. I will set the value of the parameter to the value of the current floor plus five. So like this, I sh I'm certain that the destination floor will be five levels higher than the current floor. To make the elevator actually process the event, the state chart should proceed by one cycle, which means that it will actually accept the event and start processing it and do whatever it takes to follow any transitions to the next state. So if I proceed by one cycle, in that case, I should assert that the active state now is the elevator main dot moving state, or I can even also specify that Within this moving state, there is a stop substate, which is moving.region1.moving. 
moving up because the state charge would be simultaneously in the super state and its substate. So if I run this test, the second test has also succeeded. Okay, I see I've forgotten to change my first test uh, back so that it's back to normal. So I run both tests again and both will succeed. So here we see how we can test by explicitly raising an event and see what happens after the event has been processed. The third requirement is quite similar to the second requirement. I will just show you a test that I have already pre-created. So the third requirement was whenever we request a floor but it's already the same as the current floor. In that case the elevator should not move, it should remain idle. To test this we basically just raise an event where the destination floor will be equal to the current floor. We process the event and then we check that indeed the elevator is not moving but it simply remains in the idle state. If I also run this new test then everything is still functioning for the next test, take the fourth requirement, where we will test what happens whenever we want the elevator to move up exactly one floor. So I will write a test, which I will call move up one floor, in which I will specify everything that needs to happen. First of all, of course, I have to simulate that I will raise an event to make the elevator move up one floor. And then I will have to, as usual, process the event and see what's happening. That, well, basically the elevator should be moving up. Now what I also want to do is to actually check that after having moved up, the new value of the current floor variable is one more than the value it used to be before. So to do this, in my state chart test, I have to use some local variable. So here I will introduce a new local variable, which is an integer value I call i, that's initially equal to the value of the current floor. And after having moved up, I would like to verify that the new value of the current floor is one more than the previous current floor and that's basically the test that I would like to verify so I'm going to run the test and again the test is uh, functioning of course we can do the same test for moving down so we just uh, change move up by move down and here we have minus one and minus one and moving down and this would be another similar test as this one so let me just copy the one I have already created for this for the sake of completeness to show that it functions. And now we go to the fifth requirement, which allows me to show you another feature of the unit testing framework for state charts, which is the ability to write loops. So basically what I want to test now is that whenever we move up to a requested floor, eventually the elevator should reach the destination floor and become idle. But in between, it should move step by step one floor at a time. So I want to actually test that one floor at a time, the current floor is incremented by one. Let me call the test move up to requested floor above current floor. And I'm going to do a simulation in which I want to raise floor event to move four floors up. I want to process the event. So again, since here my goal is to actually check what happens to the value of the current floor whenever this event is being processed i'm going to use a local variable i that is initialized to the value of current floor and then as we have seen in our state chart specification when i'm starting moving up there will be a loop here where i will continue to move up until one has reached the destination floor and at every step the current floor is increased by one so i actually want to test this specific behavior so to do this I will have to write uh, some loop uh, if my destination has not been reached yet. I will increase the value of i by 1 and at each time I will assert that I'm still in the moving up state. I will verify that indeed the current floor has been increased by 1 and then I will again let the state chart simulator proceed by one cycle to go to the next step in the simulation process, which means that it will continue processing until one has reached the destination state. So that will be the final step. After I have reached the destination, I assume that now the current floor is equal to the destination floor. And at that moment, the elevator should be idle. So this is my test. I'm going to run the test to see if it works. Again, the test succeeds. 
the final requirement I'm going to write as part of this demonstration is number six, which says that the fact that we automatically go back to the ground floor after five seconds, if no floor has been requested during these five seconds. Let me call this test return to ground floor after a timeout. So we start initializing the state chart. At the end, we will exit the state chart. Of course, I will have to start from a floor that is not equal to the ground floor. So I will set the current floor to some value above the ground floor. And just to be sure that we are indeed starting from an elevator that is in the idle state, let me verify this by the following assertion. And now I will have to simulate a timeout of five seconds. So if I do this, as you see in specification, this state chart should actually follow the transition with the after five seconds, and it should starting to move down to the ground floor. So we proceed five seconds, and after this, we will verify if the destination floor is indeed the ground floor. So why do we check this? Basically, because in the specification, we see that after five seconds, the destination floor should be set to zero. Since the current floor was initially set to 10, we will have to go down 10 floors, so we'll have to decrement the value of current floor 10 times. To do this, uh, rather than again writing a while loop, I will proceed 10 cycles uh, at a time. And at the end, normally I should have reached the idle state of the state chart. And at that moment, current floor should be the ground floor, so it should be equal to zero. So let's run this test together with all the others. And again, we see that all tests have succeeded. This example, I've shown you that you can actually write tests for a given state chart specification quite easily. It looks very much like if you would write unit tests in any other programming language. It's just that the language for writing the tests is a domain-specific language that is dedicated to the state chart formalism of Yakindu. But once you know this language, it's very simple to write the tests and to run them automatically. So I hope you have liked this approach and I welcome you to start testing it yourself. Thank you.